It's all you need. King 
of kings, Lord of lords, we have a father. Ba 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 Father, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Lord, we praise your name. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. Lord, we praise your name. Lord, we praise your name. We give you all the Now we give you, we give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy. Him. 
I know that this is an audiovisual platform, but if you're more focused on the screen than you are in the worship, then something is wrong. Come on, give God that praise. Praise Him, praise Him. Praise Him, He's awesome, He's awesome, He's awesome, He's awesome, He's awesome. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise the everlasting King. Can you praise Him one more time? Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Can you join me and praise him one more time? Come on, let's go. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise the everlasting King. Yes, he's awesome. Hmm. Everything we have needed, his hand has provided. No, I didn't say he has given you everything you want. Because many a time, our wants are not what we need. And that's why sometimes when we think that God is being too slow in blessing us. You know, God always knows what we need. And what we deserve. So we give him glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. Some of you have never had a car accident this year. So God has been protecting your going out and your coming in. And if you're watching now and you say, Pastor, well, I had a wreck. Well, let us thank God for the gift of life because he still preserved you. Come on, how I wish that men will praise the Lord. Oh, come on, praise him, praise him. Give him thanks. Give him thanks for all he has done. Yes, come on, he has been so kind to you. Ah, have you watched the news lately to see how many people are homeless even during this festive season? Oh, Try it 
Yes, in English. Rejoice, 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 rejoice in the Lord. I say rejoice. Can you rejoice? Rejoice. Somebody say rejoice. Rejoice. Oh, rejoice in the Lord and rejoice. Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. Yes. And he deserves all the praise. Do you know how many people have plans for Christmas and they didn't wake up Christmas morning? <clears throat> Do you know that while some of us were rejoicing and having turkey and, you know, visiting friends and making those Merry Christmas calls? Do you know that there were some families who were actually mourning because a loved one who they bought a Christmas present for was not even alive to open that gift? So rather than focus on what you do not have, why don't you celebrate God for what you have? Many of you can see me right now, so God has blessed you with eyes. Do you know how many people have eyes but cannot see? You can hear me, so God has blessed you with a sense of hearing. Do you know how many people have ears but cannot hear? And you know we're not better than they are. We're just giving thanks to God. Come on, let's have 10 more seconds. Praise God. In fact, some of you have been praising Him. God bless you. Thank Him. Thank Him for January, February, March. Thank Him. You may not have been able to travel to your perfect holiday destination this summer, but God has given you the gift of life. Have you not heard of people who died at the vacation spots that they went to if you can think enough you can thank enough if you can think enough you can thank God enough God has been good to you bless his holy name come on thank him don't get tired don't get tired let heaven hear your voice of gratitude give praises to the king of glory ha huh. Father, we bless you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for our spouses. Thank you for our children. Thank you for those who are trusting you for spouses. Thank you for those who are trusting you for the fruit of the womb. Father, we bless your name. We glorify your name. Ha! Ah, you are able to do it exceedingly and abundantly more than we can think. So, Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing right now. Thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you for what you will do in the new year. Rejoice in the Lord. I say rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's always so kind for God to have a word for his children when we gather together for bedroom worship. Do you know how many people gather and God does not speak? Do you know how many people come to church and they go home this, they go home the same way they came? Do you know how many people are hoping to hear from God? The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1, in the days of Samuel, when Samuel was a little boy, the Bible says that visions were scarce and the word of the Lord was rare. But we thank God that God in his infinite mercy has a word for us tonight. By show of hands, how many of you are trusting God to answer you speedily in the new year? Wave your hands at me. Hallelujah. All right, even if I may not see you wave those hands, Heaven sees those waving of hands. If you are trusting God to answer you in the new year speedily, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God has a word for us. Pick up your Bible. Let's quickly go to 1 Kings chapter 18. 
And for those of you who are familiar with our ministry, you know very well that God's servant does not think of things to say. I stay in his presence and I do not rise until he speaks. Hmm. God does speak <laughs> because he is a covenant keeping God. Hmm. There is no one like him. He's an alpha God. Hey, there is no one like him. Covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. Alpha Omega. There is no one like you. So our God is an awesome God. Thank God. God honors the contract I have with him. For those of you who have gotten the recent video teaching we put out, titled, Preparing for a Closer Walk with God in 2019, I hope you watched it. One of the resources that we're sharing for free is your contract with God. Your contract with God. And we're going to 1 Kings, but before we do, let me just pull this out in the book of John chapter 12. I think it's very important for someone to hear this. Don't worry, we're still going to worship. Hallelujah. John chapter 12, verse 49. I think it's very important for you to hear this. And this is my testimony. John chapter 12, verse 49. Before we go to the text that the Lord has for us, John chapter 12, verse 49 says, for I did not speak of my own accord, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. And that has been the testimony of my calling. That has been the testimony of our ministry. I don't like saying my ministry, the ministry that God gave to us. And so I like saying our ministry, the ministry that God gave to us. John chapter 12, verse 49. I'm not speaking of my own accord. No, the Father. <laughs> the I am that I am commanded me on what to say and how to say it. I'm not speaking of my own accord. And I thank God for 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, which says, when we came to you and spoke about the power of Christ and his resurrection, we did not need to come up with nice fables or carefully designed stories to convince you. <laughs> no, no. And that's the testimony of our ministry. So I hope you've got First Kings. Let's go to chapter 18. First Kings, very, very well. Elijah is on Mount Carmel. And as he's on Mount Carmel, he's got 450 prophets of Baal and then 400 prophets of Asherah. So 400 plus 450, that's 850 against one person. But that one person is with God. And when that one person is with God, they've got the victory. Somebody say, I am with God. Therefore, I have the victory. Hallelujah. So Elijah is there on the Mount Carmel. They've said, look, you know what? You set up a sacrifice, you guys who are idol worshipers, and let me, Elijah, the prophet of God, set up my sacrifice as well. Call upon your God, see if he's going to answer with fire. I'll call upon my God, we'll see if he'll answer with fire. The God who answers with fire, he is going to be the God we'll all bow to. So they have tried over and over and over again and they have failed. Mm. We're not going to that right now. But And then Elijah, he's ready. He prays in verse 37. He prays in verse 37, answer me, O Lord, answer me. So these people will know that you, O Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Verse 38, look at that, one verse later. God is about to answer somebody's prayer one verse later. Hallelujah. <laughs> verse 38, then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil. In verse 39, when all the people saw this, they fell and they prostrated and cried, 
The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. By the way, that's what Elijah means. The Lord, he is God. Jehovah, he is God. Eli, Jah. Jah, Jehovah, is Eli. Yes, Jehovah is God. Eli, Jah, the Lord is God. And because of what God is about to do in your life in the new year, there are some people who will start to praise God using your name. Now look, the God of Elizabeth, answer my prayer. The God of Samuel, answer my prayer. The God of Linda, answer my prayer. The God of Joseph, Joseph, my colleague who at work, who I've seen God do great things in their life, answer my prayer. So you see, they prostrated and they said, the Lord, he is God, which is what Elijah means. So they're worshiping God, the God of Elijah. Hallelujah. What God is going to do in your life in the new year, it'll be so powerful. People will begin to pray to God using calling on your God, the God you serve. Hallelujah. I hope you understand that. I, I hope you do. I hope we're listening with the ears of the spirit because the ears of the flesh will say, wait a minute. Are you encouraging people to elevate themselves above God? Pray in my name and God will hear. No, folks. Let him who has ears listen to what the Spirit is saying. Hallelujah. So God answered Elijah speedily. But there's something that Elijah had to do before God answered him speedily. Let's go to verse 30. Can somebody say verse 30? Verse 30. All right. Very important. Then Elijah said to all the people, this is before God answered him speedily. Before. Aha. Uh -huh. So it's very important that we don't just celebrate the testimony. We should know the story behind the testimony and the story that led to the glory. Many a times we see the trophy, but we don't know the story behind the trophy. Please, let's pay attention. Verse 30, then Elijah said to all the people, come here to me. They came to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord, which was in ruins. Elijah repaired the altar of the Lord, which was in ruins. And in verse 31, Elijah took 12 stones, one for each of the 12 tribes. It gives illustration as to how he did it. Verse 32 also tells us with the stones, he built the altar and so on and so forth. Elijah had to repair the altar of the Lord, which was in ruins before God will answer him. And that is what God's message is for us today. If you are trusting God in the new year to answer you speedily, there are some altars in your life that have been ruined. There's the altar of the Lord in your life that has been ruined by so many other things. And those altars have to be repaired. The altar of prayer. For some of us, our prayerlessness has rendered, rendered the altar of the Lord in our lives powerless because a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. When we're in church, amongst other people, we are vibrant. When we're at home, we are dormant. That is not a victorious Christian life. The altar of our lips, some of us have been involved in so much gossip backbiting. Some of us get involved in conversations of which we do not know the story. We say things that offend God and it puts in ruins the altar of the Lord. For some of us, it's our walk with God. It has been hot today, cold tomorrow. Hot today, cold tomorrow. You're never willing to commit and take a stand with God. And Revelation chapter 3 verse 15, God said for such people, I'll spit them out of my mouth. And that sort of lukewarmness and inconsistency has put the altar of God in your life in ruins. There are so many aspects. And one of the dangers of a pastor giving a list when he's preaching is that some people would say, oh, thank God he didn't mention mine, so I'm off the hook. Please be wise. We're about to cross over into the new year. You're about to cross the Red Sea trusting God to bring you closer to your Canaan. This is not the time to play games. And as you know, our ministry, we stand for one thing. We bring forth hard-hitting truth because we're not interested in numbers or followership. 
If the words to the toes, it means you're standing in the wrong place and you need to get back in line. And as you work on the alignment, you will see more fulfillment. So there's certain altars in our lives that have been in ruins that need to be repaired. Many of them. For some, it's, it's the sort of friends we keep. Yes, your friends, those who are within your sphere of influence, we use that expression or phrase, sphere of influence, for a reason. Because the people closest to you, just like on the knuckles on the hand, can give you the toughest hit. And some, for some of us, it's the friends we have, the company we keep. They're sort of watered down the grace of God upon your life. They don't add value to your life. They don't enhance your walk with God. And it has led to the altar of God in your life, which used to be strong, it's now in ruins. Your commitment to your local church, your commitment to the ministry that God has called you to. For some of us, our commitment is kind of shaky. And that shakiness has put in ruins the altar of God in your life. The God of heaven would not have responded to Elijah immediately if he had not, first of all, repaired the altar of God in his life. What are those things that are out of place in your walk with God? If you don't repair them, how can God respond to you suddenly? Then there are some altars that need not to be repaired. They need to be replaced. One of them is the altar of pride. And in Christianity today, humility has become a scarce commodity. During the course of this year, there were three families that the Lord gave us the grace to come in contact with our ministry. <laughs> and there are three striking similarities that they all have. I'll share them with you very quickly. Listen attentively. The first family was a situation whereby there was sickness, a very terminal sickness in the family with the, with the wife. And the God of heaven gave specific instructions on what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, and the specific time frame of when it must be done. Because of pride, this couple ignored the instructions. They ignored the word of the Lord. And when they saw that things were getting really worse and things were falling apart, by the time they came around and realized that, you know what, this ain't working. And they said, all right, we're ready. The grace for that assignment had passed away. Unfortunately, that woman died thereafter. The second family, this family came into our ministry the first day they came. After the gathering, I was doing something, putting something in my bag, and the Holy Spirit said, son, stand up, look up. And so I left my bag because I've learned to obey God. When God speaks, I do not debate him, I obey him. I immediately stood up and looked straight ahead. And I saw this couple. On the very first day, the wife was trying to help arrange the chairs and the seats because we're using a temporary location right now. So the chairs had to be put back. And immediately the husband said, stand up, Samuel, turn around and look straight ahead. I look at and the husband said to her, no, 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 no. Leave that alone. That's not for us. That's for them to do. Leave them alone. Let them do it. Let's go home. And the Holy Spirit said, my son, take note. Now continue what you're doing. All right. And so I, and as time went on, as this couple would come, as time went on, I got to find out that there's a particular terminal illness that this person has. And one grace that God has given me, watch out for that word, grace. Grace. I didn't work for it. I did not labor for it. It is the grace of God. Because of the grace of God upon my life, anytime I hear of sickness, it's like the lion in me rises up to face it head on. Because the God I serve is able to heal of any disease and set anybody free from any sickness. So usually because of that grace, anytime I hear of illness, the lion of Judah in me, the lion of God in me, rises up and I'm ready to confront it. But I've always got to be attentive to the Holy Spirit. The fact that you have the grace does not mean you do things impulsively. It does not mean you do things because you feel like doing it. The Bible says, remember how you received it 
and how it was given to you. So I've always, the moment I found out, I want to say, oh God, I'll go ahead and pray for her. The Holy Spirit said, no, just watch. Don't forget what Jesus said, watch and pray. We're going somewhere, folks. This is bedroom worship, and you're trusting God for a fulfilling year next year. These are important truths that, I, that you must hear and put into practice so that your worship can result in testimony. Enough of lifting holy hands and nothing is happening. Enough of singing in melodic voices and nothing is happening. Your worship in the new year must result in testimony. Somebody shout hallelujah. Aha. So this is the word of the Lord. Hmm. As time will go on, this couple, as they come, they'll display various magnitudes of pride. And the Holy Spirit, anytime I want to pray, the Holy Spirit said no. And I could see the eagerness. I could see her eagerness and willingness. You know, but the Holy Spirit said no. Just hold on. Don't pray for it. Keep watching. And I could always see that it's the husband that would sort of, you know, be like, no, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> don't forget the first day, the act of pride was, no, no, no. We don't carry chairs. That's for them. Leave that for them. Let's go. And if I had not obeyed the Holy Spirit, that first day they came, I would not have seen it. Obedience is important. For some of you, your disobedience has put in ruins the altar of God in your life. The last day, when one day when this couple came, we asked everybody to stand up. Because in our ministry, when we're praying to God, we all stand up. You can't sit down complacent, chilling, and you're praying. No, everybody stand up. And because of their pride, they refused to stand up. And that was the last day. They came and the Holy Spirit said, my son, take note of that. And then the Holy Spirit said, my son, do you remember their display of pride on day one, the first day? I said, yes. Now connect it to their display of pride on the last day, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha et Omega. That's why the Lord said, son, they are not worthy to partake of the grace I've given you. So let them carry, let the wife carry that terminal illness to another place. I'm a man under authority. It's not about me. It's about God. And I do not move unless God speaks. For those of you who know our ministry, you know very well. We don't do things because it feels good. Neither do I just do things out of impulse. If God has not spoken, we remain there. <laughs> Two families now, isn't it? The third family. <laughs> this is this year, folks. I'm not talking about in the days of Moses I'm telling you what is happening now because being current is the currency of heaven. This third family, after I tell you about that story, and then I'll tell you the three striking similarities with these families. This third family, the moment I met them, and I realized that their daughter had a debilitating sort of disease. And I was prompted because of that grace God has given me. If anybody has any illness, I want the arm of the Lord to be stretched through me and God glorify his name. But the Lord said, wait, my son, and watch. After a period of time, God started to uncover things that I would see physically them do. And after a while, the pride, yes, just like as in the previous case and the one before, the pride of the father, the husband of the home, they just negated when God had something waiting for them, but pride made them lose it. Folks, let me tell you one, the, the, the three striking similarities with these three families. Number one, they all are residents and inhabitants of Britain. Mm -hmm. Second one, they're all Christian families. Thirdly, in all three cases, it was the man of the home whose pride blocked the harvest of that family and the healing of their loved one. The pride. You see, God's word cannot be broken according to John chapter 10 verse 35. The Bible says in James chapter four, God elevates the humble, but he resists the proud. He opposes the proud. When you have the altar of pride in you, you have automatically put yourself on the opposing side of God. 
And when you put yourself on the opposing side of God, you cannot expect the same God to bless you. Because according to Samuel Jonathan, God will not bless your mess. And so in this new year, huh, <laughs> look at those three similarities. In all three cases, they had terminal or long-term diseases, debilitating diseases. The grace to heal was available, but the Lord said, hold on and watch. The pride. Ah, for those of you who are single, single ladies, single women, for those of you who are trusting God for a husband, please be very careful. Be very careful. Don't let his looks qualify him to be your husband. Don't let his finances, the bling and the ka -ching, don't let that qualify him to be your husband. Because you see, that man takes place two roles, apart from being the breadwinner, two roles. Number one, he's the head of the home and the priest of the family. If the head of the home and the priest of the family should have the altar of pride established in him, his altar of pride can block the harvest for that family. You can't joke with this. And if you're a single person too as well, and you're operating in pride, you need to be careful. So the Bible says that concerning Elijah, he prayed in verse 37. Hear my cry, answer me, O Lord, is what he said. Hear my cry, hear my cry, Thou who answereth prayer, hmm. Jesus, hear my cry, hear my cry, oh, hear my cry, thou who answereth prayer. That was the demand or request of Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18, Verse 37, the next verse, God answered him. But before God would answer when he called, he had to first of all repair the altars of God that were in ruin. In verse 30, if you are trusting God to answer your prayers speedily and without delay in the new year, there's some altars that need to be repaired. And there's some that don't need to be repaired, they need to be replaced. Hmm. Lift up your hands right now and tell God, God, I'm sorry, Lord. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry for everything I have done, everything that I've entertained in my mind that has destroyed or put in ruins your altar. Lord, I realize that being a Christian does not mean I am Christ-like. Yes, and ticking the box, the right box, does not make you pop, oh God. Based on what I've just heard, Lord, I realize that there's some things I have messed up. Fathers, if you're watching, I don't know if there's any men watching, you need to repent. There are times that your actions or inactions have hindered and blocked the hand of God from stretching into your family. If you have the humility, if you're humble enough, now is the time to say, Lord, I am sorry. Lord, I am sorry. Hey, Father. Hear my cry. Hear my cry. Thou who answereth prayer. Now you're going to pray like this. Repeat this after me. Heavenly Father, please restore your altar in my life. Come on, begin to pray. Heavenly Father, please restore your altar in my life. Yes. Every aspect of your altar in my life that has been ruined, Father, please restore them. Father, please help me to take the right steps to repair them. I hope you are praying. I hope you are praying. I hope you are praying. Lord, those altars of sin in my life, 
that need to be destroyed. Lord, help me destroy them. Lord, those altars in my life that ought to be destroyed, Lord, help me destroy them so that I can have a fulfilled life as a Christian, that I can experience your fullness. Hear my cry, hear my cry. Oh, hear my cry, oh, hear my cry, thou who answereth prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you because your word says in the book of Hebrews that the father disciplines the child that he loves. We could have come here and had a nice musical exercise and not hear from you. But because you love us and because you want us to experience, encounter and engage your fullness in the new year, you decided to reveal to us what must be done because you reveal to redeem. You are our redeemer and you are the remedy. Father, help us, O Lord. As we have repented before you, Lord, we pray that you forgive us. Lord, we pray that out of your tender mercies, we pray, Lord, that you restore us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for those altars of sin being destroyed. Those altars that have taken the place of God in our lives, the altars of sin, thank you for destroying them. And thank you, Lord. Ah, hmm. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Mm. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord just said, look, if you take a look at verses 31 and 32 and 33, you see that there were actual steps that Elijah took, arranging the stones, rearranging this, rearranging that. Thus saith the Spirit of the living God. For those of you who are diligent enough to continue after we've gone off air and go before the Lord in prayer and seek his face. For some of you, it will just be tonight. For some of you, for those of you who are really determined, it may take the next three nights, which means crossing over into the new year. And you begin to pray to God fervently with intensity that, Lord, open my eyes, reveal to me those aspects of your altar that are in ruins in my life. Lord, please give me instructions with precision so that I will take the right steps for complete and wholesome restoration of your altar in my life, in my family, and in my home. May the Lord give you the grace to obey and to do. God bless you. We'll see you next year.